problem is one. Me and you, Kharmechi, WhatsApp group, different. Combos don't communicate. Obanana, from the head to the toe, Toma Gwagar Louis Vuitton, Garamo, Gabel Gucci, Obana Versace is my name. When I'm traveling around, baby, Naki Lamborghini, Gibogati. When I'm flying in the sky, I'm Lufthansa, Emirates, business class. When I head to door or disaster, you must price your cotton on. When you're flying your mango and Kolula, when you're driving, you're still stuck on Toyota Tez. Me and you just don't, we don't match. We don't match. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey, gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kapana Shibange, and this is how I do things. It's a show where you send me your questions, and I let you know how I do things, and I can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Take it, don't take it, use it. Don't use it at all. Listen, do what you will with it. No pressure to use it, none whatsoever. Because me, I'm not professional. I am no professional at all. So this does not count as professional advice. Nada. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Are you and your men, the person that you want to be with, are you compatible? Do your combos communicate? Are you in the same WhatsApp group? Can you gel? Do you bond? Do you make a good unit or nah? Because incompatibility doesn't necessarily mean that your relationship is not going to work. It just means that it might not be as happy, as joyful, or as easy as you want it to be. So if you want your relationship to work out smooth sailing, like you just slipped on butter, listen, then you want to find a person that you are compatible with. So I'm going to give you eight ways to test if you and your men are compatible or not. Number one, perfection does not exist. Perfection is a lie, babes. They lie to you, stop looking for it. If you want to find the perfect guy and have the perfect relationship, that is the best way for you to split your relationship, for it to bum out and for you guys to fall apart and suffer to absolute fatal destruction. Do not look for perfection in a relationship. So with this test, everything that you're going to see here is just to let you know how good or how bad it will be how easy or how difficult it will be for you guys to build a nice strong relationship but don't look for perfection number two if you don't think that he is the one then I have something to tell you the problem is not him it is you you are the one who is not compatible for anyone the idea of the one will make you want to fit him into a very specific mold and trying to fit him into a very specific mold is a good way to chase the man away you're going to become bob the builder you're going to try and constantly mold tip him away and try to make him into the perfect image of the man that you have in your brain and honey there's no man in the world that could ever ever fit the mold that you have created in your brain. So if he does not fit into the ideal picture of who the one is, then definitely that relationship is not compatible. Number three, you are way too different. Yes, opposites do attract. That's a good thing. You like hot, he likes cold. You come together, it's just this beautiful interaction of fire and ice that just meets and creates flowing water. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's beautiful. Sparks happen. Life is interesting. He shows you different things. However, if he is too different, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem to a point where you guys can't communicate, you guys can't agree on anything, and there's nothing that you find interesting together. So you may like different music to the music that he likes, and he shows you around, and he opens your eyes to a whole new world. That's great. He may like to travel, and you have never traveled before. Opens your eyes to a new world. But there are certain differences that if there are too many of them and there's no point where you can find some sort of similarity, that is just a problem and a bomb waiting to explode. There must be something, just one thing. You have your sense of humor is the same, that you may have the same values as people. Somewhere in your relationship, there must be just one thing, just one thing that you have in common. And that's where you can meet find each other, be comfortable together. And everywhere else, 
you can explore, grow, and help each other learn new and different things. Number four, you just don't get this guy. I don't get you. What do you mean? I don't understand how you think. If that is the case for your relationship, then it's going to be very hard for you to understand each other. This will just mean that there's going to be a lot of messages that just fly over your head because you just don't understand this person. If you are the only one to compromise in the relationship, this may be a problem. If you try and stay away from arguments because you know that I don't understand this person, it never ends great, so they just not have arguments at all, that is also a sign that maybe you guys don't understand each other. Even if we have different views and different perspectives, there must be a way that I can communicate to help you see my point of view. And there must be a way that he can communicate to help you see his point of view. And this just connects to number five, way too much arguing. There's no such thing as a relationship with zero arguments. There will always be some sort of bickering. It will happen. You will argue about certain things. You can't see eye to eye on everything, even if it's just what to eat and what to have for takeout tonight. That's fine. Arguments are actually a good way for you guys to learn how to communicate with each other, see each other's different perspectives and learn more about what is important. I may want to argue about what to wear today because my look and my appearance may be in very important to me. And you may want to argue about TV time, that you want more TV time and I don't want that much TV time. We get to understand each other's point of view of why I think TV is not great and why you think TV is great and we get to learn from each other and grow. However, if you guys are just constantly arguing about everything, what time to wake up, what time to go to sleep, what to eat, what to drink, you argue about everything. A day does not go by without you guys arguing. That is a sign of incompatibility because it just means that you don't understand each other's views, you don't understand where you guys are coming from, that you don't agree on things and there's nothing that you find in common because there must be some things that are easy. You don't have to argue about those things. I understand you, you understand me. I get you, boo. Me and you, I get you, man. But if you're always arguing about everything, high frequency of arguments, that's just a sign of incompatibility. That's just a sign that we may not actually match. Number six is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus. Huge area of disagreements huge area in our lives this is a biggie if you can't agree on jesus this can lead to a lot of problems religious differences can be a deal breaker for a lot of people can you date somebody who has a religious difference from you i believe you can why because we learn we grow and at some point we may want to join the one or join the other in their religion. So it's fine. If there is religious differences at the beginning, it gives you both an opportunity to learn, share and grow. But at some point meeting and understanding each other and coming to a point where you can go beyond dating and getting married and be like, boo, I understand your Jesus. As long as you understand my person, the Bible tells us to not be unequally yoked. You can start the relationship unequally yoked, but when you get towards marriage, then be more compatible. Our job is to share our joy, to spread the good news. It's Jesus's job to convert a person, to work in a person. But as long as you are open to sharing with a person, that can be the start of a relationship. But the end of the relationship could be because you just can't find a meeting point. You can't understand each other. And you're incompatible when it comes to something as serious and as important as Jesus. Number seven is social mixing. Have you met your man's friends? When you guys go out together, is it just you or do you meet up with other people? Has he met your friends? Here's the thing. If when you guys go out, it's only you and him, it may be that he's scared to mix you in his social group and vice versa. Is if he has never met or hung out with your friends, there may be a social issue here. Is he hiding you? Is he keeping you away from his friends? He's dodgy is dodgy 
you want to try and have a social mix. At some point, your friendship groups should mix. He should know your friends and your friends should know him. You should know his friends as well. If he's keeping you away from his friends, why? Why? Being able to mix socially is also a very important part, especially for us in our young and thriving lives. We want to still be able to mix with people and it helps us to understand the type of influences that our partners have. So if you cannot mix socially, can you mix in other areas of your relationship too? And finally, number eight, communication differences. Can we meet in the way that we communicate if I can't talk to you without shouting because this is just how I feel. And you, on the other hand, like to keep it calm and talk things through, then that may be a part of the relationship that may cause a bit of stress. If you can't communicate at all, that's also communication differences. And a relationship is strengthened by communication. If you can't talk, then this relationship I am pretty sure it is doomed. Doomed! There has to be some way that you can talk to each other, understand each other, share your opinions, and also resolve your differences. All of these things on these lists are solved by communication. Non-verbal and verbal communication is very important. Maybe you need to understand each other's love languages so you know how a person communicates, so you know how you need to listen and hear him out. Now those are the eight ways that you can tell if you are compatible with your means. Let me know which one stood out the most for you and what are you concerned about? If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below and maybe I'll do a video all about it in my next video. But until then, beautiful people, I'm Kapana Shimagi and this is how I do things. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for making it right until the end. Now if you have not subscribed to my channel, check, click on this button right here and feel free to binge watch. Check out my website www.kupanashimage.com to find out more about the show and to find out more about my new journal, Her Daily Success Journal, a 90 day guided journal for everybody who wants to be God-centered, wants to achieve their goals and sleep with gratitude. But until next time, 